Hey guys, Anycubic recently reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in checking out the Cobra S1 combo. Now, I don't usually take on product reviews because my main focus on this channel is sharing what I've learned about running a print farm. And over the past five years, I've been operating my own where I'm averaging about 12,000 parts a month now. And most of what I cover on this channel is really about the systems and lessons that I've learned from that experience. That said, I thought this would be a good chance to look at the Cobra S1 combo, not as a general consumer review, but specifically through the lens of print farm use. At around $450, I wanted to see if it's a great starting point for print farms. There's already plenty of videos that go over the basics like unboxing, setup, and print quality. What I want to do here is give you some additional perspectives, things that could make a difference if you're considering the Cobra S1 for building your print farm. Here's what I'll be covering, the setup, test prints, filament capabilities, software, and power consumption. And then I'll wrap up with some final thoughts on whether the Cobra S1 makes sense in a print farm environment. Getting the Cobra S1 combo ready to run is straightforward. It comes fully assembled, so the only work is removing a few screws and packaging material. The Ace Pro multi-material unit is also simple to hook up, just a couple PTFE and cable connections. My first setup took around 30 minutes since I was taking my time, but once you know the process, you can bring additional machines online in under 10 minutes each. The built-in auto calibration menu handles both bed leveling and vibration compensation. You can do the full auto calibration, which takes about 20 minutes. From a farm perspective, this kind of repeatable, fast setup is important. When running a print farm, as demand starts to pick up, you don't want to be bottlenecked by a slow setup time on your 3D printers as you need to add more. So this is definitely a positive for the Cobra S1. For the test prints, I didn't go for the typical Benchy test because filament profiles always need tuning. There's just too many variables that can affect the print quality. But the main tests that matter to me are the ones that show the mechanical deficiencies of the printer, things that can introduce unwanted print artifacts due to the build quality. The first test I did was a VFA test. One detail I noticed right away is that the S1 uses tooth idlers on the X carriage. There's debate about how much of a difference they make, but in my VFA test, printing between 150 and 300 millimeters per second, I was only able to see some slight VFAs at the lower speeds, but if you're printing over 200 millimeters per second, you should be okay. This tells me that the XY motion system is capable of producing smooth surfaces consistently, which is nice to see. Next, I tested the layer stacking of the Z axis. The results weren't as great. There's some inconsistency shown, a repeating pattern roughly every couple of millimeters. It's not extreme, and for functional parts, it isn't a major issue but it can show up on taller prints if you're looking closely. It's hard to expect much in the Z direction for most printers. They're all using lead screws, which can have a slight wobble. I would call the layer stacking average at best. For dimensional accuracy, I printed a 100 millimeter calibration model and measured how square it printed. The corner to corner measurements were 141.2 and 140.77, making about 0.28% out of square. This is better than most machines I've tested, which is typically around 0.4%, but it's still not perfect. If you take on jobs that require dimensional accuracy, this should be completely acceptable for most prints. The first layer also struggled with consistency. Some areas were too close to the bed and some were too high. This can be a problem with prints that have larger surface areas, and they may tend to warp if they're not making great contact with the surface of the bed. Slowing down the first layer helps, but it just adds more time, which is negative when you're printing large volumes. I've seen better, more consistent first layers from other machines, so this definitely needs some improvement. I think the real winner of these tests is the surface smoothness of the prints. I printed a Vader statue on the S1 and the X1C to compare. The surface quality was better on the S1, but it was still plagued by the Z artifacts. The S1 comes with a brand of belts that was the same on my Q1 Pros, which left residue on the pulleys after about 2500 hours and impacted the surface quality. The only difference is the Q1 has a constant chamber temperature of 60C and most likely degraded the belts faster. Since the S1 doesn't have a chamber heater, you may be okay, but I haven't had any long-term testing to prove that. Regardless, the surface quality is the best I've ever seen out of the box, and its biggest downside is the Z artifacts. The hot end is advertised as being able to heat up to 320 degrees Celsius, but it uses a PTFE liner. PTFE starts to degrade around 265 Celsius, which is what I typically print ABS with. I don't recommend printing ABS with this printer until you upgrade to an all-metal hot end. This makes this printer better suited for PLA, PETG, and TPU. For ABS and ASA, would really require an all-metal hot end upgrade. Replacement hot ends are relatively inexpensive, but I would have liked to have seen this printer come with an all-metal hot end out of the box. The lack of a chamber heater also doesn't make it ideal for high temp materials. However, for low temp materials like PLA and PTG, it's completely fine. The Ace Pro system is easy enough to use, but it's not the fastest. 
Each spool has to be fully loaded before you can move on to the next one. It also has a built-in heater for filament drying, but without ventilation, it's not an effective drying system because it cannot remove the moisture from the air to absorb more moisture from the filament. Simply heating up does help, but venting would be much more effective. For print farm use, you typically go through filament quickly, so wet filament isn't really a problem. The biggest benefit that you would get out of this is the filament changeover when you run out of material, which can really save your prints. For my print farm, I never print multicolor models, but I do print models in different single colors. Having the Ace Pro makes it super convenient to have the filament in place, and with the click of a few options, I can print models in different colors. With over 20 printers, it's kind of a pain in the ass to always swap filament, so this is my favorite use case for the Ace. Pro. Out of the box, the printer runs Anycubics Cobra OS. The interface is clean, responsive, and includes useful features like auto calibration. For someone running one or two printers, it feels pretty complete. Everything you would want or need is right on the screen. However, for print farm use, it is very limited. Because it's closed source, you can't customize it to fit your specific workflow, and that's where Wrinkles comes in. A community former project that adds features closer to Clipper, so you get Moonraker API support, which you can use to create your own custom dashboard manage prints through mainsail or the fluid interfaces, and even send prints directly from Orca Slicer, which isn't an option out of the box. For print farm use, you don't want to be locked down to any one specific software, and Anycubic unfortunately does this with the stock firmware. I recommend using Wrinkles if you need integration with other systems, but do so at your own risk. For power consumption, the Cobra S1 doesn't draw an excessive amount of power on its own. When printing and using the heater on the Ace Pro, the printer draws 330 watts during heat up and the Ace Pro draws 130 watts, totaling 460 watts for both units. Once you start adding multiple machines, you'll need to be mindful of your circuit limits. When the printer and the Ace have reached its set points, it draws less power. 150 watts on the printer and the Ace 2 cycles between 15 and 130 watts. I recommend you account for your max load, which in this case is 460 watts if you plan to run the heater and plan from there. For comparison, I have 18 Q1 Pros that draw 100 amps on six 20 amp circuits. If I were to draw the same amount of power with the S1 combo without the heater on the Ace Pro, I could run 36 S1 combos, which is pretty crazy to think about. I'm already making 12,000 parts a month with the Q1 Pro farm, so I could double that to 24,000 a month. Unfortunately, I print with ABS, so the Q1s are staying for now. So now I'll share my final thoughts on this printer. The Unicubic Cobra S1 combo has some strong points. It's easy to set up, produces clean surfaces on the X and Y plane with no VFAs, and with Wrinkles firmware, it can tie into more advanced features like the Moonraker API access. At the same time though, it does have its weak links like the PTFE lined hot end, which can easily be replaced, but it does limit higher temp materials out of the box. The Z axis also shows some unwanted print artifacts. I think this printer overall is a great value for the price for individual use. If you wanna have a few of these printers to start your print farm, it would be hard to recommend anything else, especially if you're looking to start out with 3D printing. However, if you wanna get into more professional work like functional prints with high temp engineering grade materials, you would be better off looking for for a printer with chamber heater and hardened steel extruded components. For around $460 at the time of this video, it's a practical option if your farm is focused on multi or single color PLA or PETG prints and you want machines that are quick to deploy and set up, then this is the printer to get. I don't know of any other enclosed Core XY printer with a multi-material system for $460. If you upgrade the hot end, it's hard to compete with this printer at its price point. I wanna thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you have suggestions or questions on anything related to the Cobra S1 or running a print farm in general, please leave a comment below and I will reply. Thanks for watching.